Okay, so today we're going to be covering uh, chapter three uh, in the electric chemistry textbook. But again, we're going to do a very first review of uh, this topic, which is how to teach this in you know the semester long sequence. We would do a lot more, um, but it's kinetics, and again, you can't not think about things like thermodynamics and kinetics um, when we're thinking about our electrodes, even though we may or may not talk. But in all of these terms all the time, uh, kinetics is definitely going on. So let's remind ourselves of something. We're going to have a V for velocity here. Sorry for it not being scattering. A little V. Let's be with I over N, F, A. Uh, well, this will come up in multiple chapters today. So we have a velocity of the reaction. So this is basically a rate of the reaction that we did this last time. Um, how fast it's going. Remember, in electric chemistry, everything depends on how big your electrode is, so we often like to divide by A to get that over there, so that we can compare different electrodes even if they're not the same size. So that's our rate of reaction. And then, basically, if you're going to talk kinetics, any lesson that you start on kinetics, right, basically always starts from the same principle, and that's equilibrium. All right, so let's think about, you know, A being equilibrium with B, right? There'd be some sort of forward reaction rate, and there'd be some, more, some backwards reaction rate, right? And the velocity to go forward, um, right, is just k forward times the concentration of A. And the velocity to go backwards is k for backwards times the concentration of B. Um, so, okay, so we can go velocities forward and backwards. Um, we would be able to do that. The rate constant, what's the unit on this k? It actually ends up being in seconds. It gives you the time. The uh, yeah, it's not so obvious because it's fair for you that that is. Um, uh, but the, it ends up being uh, inverse seconds. They're first order rate constants um, uh, that have units of inverse uh, seconds. Right, so we wanted to you know a net reaction, right? BBF minus BB. You can plot this in there. I don't think I will. Um, right, and then you can also, of course, define an equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant would be kf over k, so the forward rate over the backwards rate. Um, and then if we um, look at that, we actually end up getting a test. Uh, uh, proportional to the concentrations. So we can look at these um, and uh, um, get uh, rates of uh, sort of how we're going um, with our um, equilibrium. Okay, so that's equilibrium. Nothing's going to change uh, from when you've like learned equilibrium before. Now, again, if you were to do kinetics and chem, right, and you would go on to say the rate of any reaction, right, is dependent on temperature. <coughs> And that's no different, right, in electric chemistry, um, as we sort of look at these. Uh, and so it's Arrhenius, right, that uh, comes up with sort of the equation for this, that K is equal to A times E to the minus E A over RT. So that's the Arrhenius equation. Um, and right, E sub A is the activation energy. Um, and A is sometimes called the frequency factor. Really, we'll just call it constant. Right? Something for some sort of proportion of the constant. Just to count the number. Um, uh, we're not going to work about it, write it down, think about it too much. What this tells you, though, is if you were to take the natural log of K, right? So the natural log of this side, right? So now we would have that would be. Oops, Proportional, it's proportional. Proportional, right, to 1 over t. So if I took the natural log of both sides, right, I get rid of the e, and now we kind of have like natural log of k proportional to t. So you can make a plot. And the book shows tons of these plots. I'm going to call like one, and then I'm going to refer 
throw you to the book later uh, if you feel like um, looking at them. But right, you can make plots. Uh, and the, the plot is usually sort of something like potential energy. Um, and then the, this is the reaction coordinate. It's a strange kind of thing. Right, and so we'll have some sort of reaction for the reactants. And another one, right, for the products. And so, right, to go from reactant to product, you have to go over, right, that activation. So, there's some sort of energy you have to overcome, right, to be able to do it. So, it's the same thing for like the chemistry. Uh, again, if you've taken any sort of either general care or pre care lately, they probably have thrown up these types of plots at you, and it's lots from no different from like the chemistry. That's why we're not going to spend a lot of time on kinetics. But what my the point in actually me covering it is you can't be an idiot and have forgotten all this. Um, meaning, you know, you stand up at your oral exam and you can't be like kinetics, never heard of it, can't write a written equation, can't write, you know, can't draw your any plots, can't, you know, remember anything, you know, to do with kinetics whatsoever. Like, you just can't be like that um, uh, as that goes. All right, so if we did this same basic um, thing with main axis, actually, let's make it delta G um, uh, instead, and this is still going to be our reaction coordinate. Uh, and so I'm going to make the same sort of thing. Um, uh, and so again, we'll have an activated complex here. We kind of get a delta G here, um, a delta G basically for the forward reaction. And then we're going to get a delta G over here for the backwards reaction. And I see that they're giving me all these nice little symbols up there. Standard free energy of activation. Mm. Again, I just close the delta G. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get the little two double cross as well. Uh, all right, delta G. Um, right, and so, um, you know, the overall then delta G for the reaction, right, is this. Right, so that's the overall change in delta G uh, for the reaction. That is the difference between those two. Um, right, and we could draw it, I mean, this one could be deeper and that one could be, and it just depends, it tells you which one is more energetically um, sort of favorable. Um, and so you could write this reaction, like, again, up here, we might have called this. Um, and if I just put this in terms of energy, this right would have been the activation energy for the forward reaction, and this would have been the activation energy for the backwards reaction. So those may be more standard plots that you've seen uh, sometimes. So this is the activation energy you've got to get over here, the activation energy if you were down here, right, to go back the other way. But you could do the same thing in delta G, which means you could write this equation a different form of the Arrhenius equation. We call it A prime, a different constant. But it's still constant. So you can write it in terms of delta G as well. Uh, uh, same sort of um, equation that we did there. Okay, so. Let's go back to electric chemistry then. We'll forget that we just were reviewing kinetics a little bit. Uh, but hopefully we're in the very case of velocities of uh, reactions. Um, all right, so let's look at our sort of activity. Again, unless I tell you otherwise, this is the only book, though, the only actually the book ever seems to be. Um, and so, right, so we have, we have a forward reaction uh, for this, and that would be Kf times the concentration of O. And I'm going to put in a little something that you may not have seen before. This zero is like an x is equal to zero, and x is equal to zero means at the surface of the electric magnet. So, um, so the concentration right, will vary as a grain of time t, but we're only really interested in looking at the surface concentration, right? I don't care what's in the bulk. 
a care of having this person. Um, so that's that, what that re reaction means, right? And so this forward rate reaction. All right. What well, first of all, this is an oxidation or a reduction in the forward rate. Just, yeah, it's a reduction, right? I mean, again, if you can't, you know, look at these and get that off the top of your head, um, again, we have some issues. So that's a reduction. So that means this forward rate reaction is related to what current? I'll give you two choices: cathodic or anodic. Cathodic, right? So cathodic goes with reduction. Right? So we could write this, right? I told you, or I, I started off today by saying V is equal to I over an effect, right? We need that. All right, so we have a V, right? And I know what current that is, like, they, right? That's the cathodic current. So I can write this, right, is equal to C, where the, again, this is the cathodic current um, over N. Okay, so now we've got rid of these pesky C, Bs that you've not really been used to seeing in equations. Uh, right, so I can get rid of the pesky B. Because um, you're like, oh, you know why well, I never measure B uh, um, uh, as far as that goes. All right, and we can write a backwards equation too. All right, where this is the end. So hopefully you could write that, right? I don't see too hard. We just switched out R instead of O, and that was the end of the current. Um, it's going to look like that. All right. All right, so we said V net would be forward minus V backwards. So we can do that, right? KF times the concentration of O at the surface minus the concentration of R at the surface over time. And that's going to be equal to I over NFA, right? the net current, not just the not the cathodic, but the net current, the um, of the both uh, point two. Um, again, this velocities are in this unit, in case it's not obvious. Moles per second centimeter squared, which we said earlier, I helped cost. Okay, so. Um, we need to kind of figure out then um, uh, what's kind of happening uh, here. Like what the question is, what's KF, right, and what's KB? So this is where I'm going to skip, but you can look at the diagrams in the book. They do a really fancy diagram. They pull out a parameter that they call alpha. Um, uh, from like a delta G, like a reaction diagram. So if you want to see where alpha comes from on a diagram, um, I'm not going to attempt it here um, while we do it. So alpha, it's called the transfer coefficient. Um, and so um, it helps, uh, again, tell you something about uh, um, uh, uh, delta G kind of like the intersection of two curves. Um, but uh, how fast um, slow sort of electron transfer is going. Because when we talk kinetics, right, we're talking about how fast the reaction um, basically can happen. OK, so we, we need an alpha term. And if we have an alpha term, we can write then an expression for k and Kf is equal to K0, right? So K0, right, would be the standard rate constant, right? So again, like everything else that's standard in life. Oops. I guess it's constant. Um, uh, it's, you know, activity is very equal to 1, that kind of thing. Um, so the standard rate constant times E to the minus alpha and there's a little f, I'll explain that in a minute times E minus E zero prime. OK, so let's go over the terms for a minute. Alpha, we just did. That's the transfer coefficient. And it's the number of electrons. It's pretty much our standard. In this case, I don't know why. We just use this F, because they're too lazy to write out F over RT. 
So you know, like we see O and O again, NF over RT or RT over NF. It's the same thing. It's the same. I don't know why. In the textbook, they decide that they can't write out of write out X over RT. Um, uh, in fact, it's confusing in the textbook because they do this at first for one electronic sample and they leave off leave off the end. I found that confusing, but um, probably you wouldn't. But uh, you know, you're not following along. But it's NF over RT. Uh, we've seen that a lot of times before. But let's look at the biggest thing that I want you to see here. <coughs> it's that term, the E minus E zero prime. So what was this E zero prime? What do you call that? The formal potential. All right, so that just means we can use concentrations as the formal potential. So it tells you that the rate of the reaction is um, is uh, controlled by e to the minus, and that's basically your driving force, right? How much higher than the formal potential are you? Like E is what you're at, right? Minus formal potential. Um, that tells you something about how fast this reaction is going to be able to take place. Um, so again, I'm trying not to come out of your equation, but when we do, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like think about what is that E minus E zero? That's where it tells you. Because this equation we're going to come up with tells you how voltage relates to potential. Sorry, potential relates to current. You know, right? We're always making these plots of I versus V, uh, right? And this equation we're trying to develop right now, um, you know, is this going to eventually lead back to I? And here's the V, right? The potential term in there. Okay, so it turns out KV is not that different. It's K zero. In this in this case, it has a one minus alpha instead of the minus alpha and f e minus e zero. That's the k v term. Um, okay, so if we were to put these together and solve for i, right? So I'm just putting them together like back into this kind of d forward minus d backwards kind of thing and solve for i. It would take me like 30 steps to do it, like, so you could follow everyone. So well, this is where we can be able to look at but you could do it. Right? We have all the pieces. We're going to get an equation that's called the Butler Volmer equation. And the Butler Volmer equation is it says i is equal to NFA. All right, so remember I had i over NFA on one side. I just moved the NFA over, right? That, that, that's not too bad. Times this k zero comes out because that's both in the kf and the k um, the forward and the k back. And now we have the concentration of O at the electric surface times e to the minus alpha n f times e minus e zero prime. All right, that's my k forward, right? Kind of sweeps in the matter. Concentration of R electric surface times. E to the minus, oops, one minus alpha, and then F, E minus, E zero. You read those sort of kind of. Um, Eve, hold up the textbook. On the, in the very front cover, all right, like the most important electrochemistry equations. So you don't write something down right here. Don't take my word for it. Um, I'm assuming Butler Volmer is on there. Yes, it is. And it's on there because it reads the equation that relates I to I. Unfortunately, it's just not that simple. Right? You know, I mean, I wish, you know, it came out to be like half is equal to natural log of mean, or something like that, you know, and it was like super, super simple. Right? And uh, we'll give Butler and Volmer some credit for coming up with this. Um, uh, uh, but, you know, that's the, that's the main um, thing that people um, can pull out. Okay, so let's think about this for a minute. What does it mean if you have a large K0? Are you going to be fast or slow to equal it? Fill it over there. Fast or slow to equal it? What does that mean? Fast, right? So you have a large rate constant, that means you go screaming fast, right? So that means you're fast on your way um, to equilibrium. So a fast rate constant um, then is somewhere in the order, maybe 1 to 10 
um, with the air you have in centimeters per second. Slow rate constants are like maybe 10 to minus 9, something like that. But just to give you an idea of you know, what the range might be. Anything that requires you to undergo any sort of molecular rearrangement. Right, automatically kind of falls into the slow category. So if you have to, to transfer an electron, if your molecule has to rearrange somehow, right, that's not going to be a really fast um, process uh, as you go along. Um, okay, so that's all we're going to do. As I said, chapter three is the shortest one. So we'll just take like a three minute break. Get up, stretch your legs, and then four, five, five, five.